Good morning. Welcome to St. Edward's Episcopal Church on this third Sunday of Easter, Easter time. We're thankful that you are here as we worship our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Our worship continues with the Holy Eucharist Rite One. It's found on page 323 in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 4, found on the screens above or in the prayer book on page 587. Let's read this responsively by half verse, ending with the refrain. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. 
You mortals, how long will you will you dishonor my glory? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. Tremble then and do not sin. Offer the appointed sacrifices. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. You have put gladness in my heart. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading for today is a reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What will we be has what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in his sin, in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. (coughs) 
After the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, he appeared to his disciples a great number of times. Some are famous narratives that we're familiar with. Some are almost passing references in the Gospels. But many saw him, and in these accounts, Jesus calls his disciples to belief in the resurrection. He calls the early Christians to follow him. He calls the people of God to action. He calls the children of God to mission. And one of the ways we can describe the actions of this calling is through three words that start with the letter W. All right, so we've got three W words today. I want to focus on the third W the most, but let me touch on the first two briefly. The first one is worship. We are called to worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is our purpose, to worship God Almighty through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Worship is the purpose of our gathering on Sunday mornings and on high holy days. We do not gather principally to meet our needs. We do not gather so that we feel better or perhaps to check off a box. All right, started my week with church. There we go, got that done. Uh, We do not gather even directly for the benefit of community or for service or for personal piety. We gather here today to worship the living God, the one true God, the creator and savior of humankind. We worship God in prayer and song and scripture reading and declaration in word and sacrament. We worship God in proclaiming his goodness as the gathered children of God. And not only do we worship as gathered people, but also as individuals and families throughout each and every day. You see, our chief end in life is to glorify God, to worship him and enjoy him forever. And so our, our calling is to worship. We are worshipers. That's the first W. Now, the second W is we are called to be warriors. Warriors. Do you guys know you're all warriors out there? (laughs) Now, this is not a call to pick up arms and fight for our rights or something like that. And certainly the church has gotten this really wrong at certain times throughout history. But it is, however, important to understand that we are really in a war, a spiritual war, fought in the heavenly realms. The battle is fought in prayer and in action. We see it in the scriptures, especially in verses like Ephesians chapter 6, where St. Paul writes, Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Sounds like a struggle, a battle, a war. Our hymnal also expresses our theology on this as we see this calling of of warrior in hymns such as number 562 where it says, Onward, Christian soldiers marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before, Christ the royal master leads against the foe, forward into battle see his banners go. And the hymn right before that, number 561, says, Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross, Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory to victory his army shall he lead, till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. We're warriors. You see, we live this calling as warriors when we defend our home and our church against the schemes of the devil with false doctrine and practice. We live this calling when we fight in this world against the injustices laid out before us in social practice, discrimination, and those that take advantage of people that cannot defend themselves. We're warriors. So we are called to be worshipers and warriors. Now there's a third W, and this is what I want to spend the most of my time on today. And it's right in our text. Right at the end of our gospel reading, Jesus says, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. We are called to be witnesses of Jesus Christ, specifically of the good news of Jesus, what we call the gospel. 
Our Lord specifically mentions his suffering, his resurrection, as well as repentance and forgiveness. These things are to be proclaimed to all the nations, Jesus says. He is saying that our witness is about sharing the cross and the resurrection, and that through this work of the Messiah, the Christ, we can repent and receive forgiveness. And this is what we proclaim here at church. This is what we are to proclaim in the world. And we do this in love, with hope, by faith, with grace in this world. And I want to point out two words in this text that get a little lost in the translation. Um, and so I think it's important to point them out. Jesus says, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. This word nations, to all nations, is important. And when we hear the word nation, we often think of our modern nation state, like France, Colombia, Nigeria, whatever it may be. But that is not what the word has in mind. The idea of a nation state that we have today wasn't invented until much later. And scholars actually argue whether the idea of a nation was developed in the Middle Ages or of a more modern time period. But either way, that is long time after the time of Christ. So the modern nation state is not what is being said here. Jesus is not saying take it to all the 100, 214 nations of the world, or however many there are. In the original text, the Greek word you will recognize it probably is the word ethnos, which is where we get our contemporary English word ethnicity. It refers more to a, a race of people, especially in our context to people outside Judaism, in other words, Gentiles. So here Christ Jesus is saying that we are to proclaim his cross and his resurrection, his forgiveness to all ethnic groups, not just nations, but to the rustic villages, to the cities, those close and far, to all people, everyone, regardless of religion, race, or ethnicity, should hear the good news of Jesus Christ. That is what is being proclaimed here. Now, the second word that gets lost in translation is this word, Witness, which is the W word, when Jesus says, you are witnesses of these things. Again, the original text, the Greek word, you may recognize it, is martyreo. It means to witness, to give evidence, to testify, which is how the word's translated, which is fine. Usually it's a eyewitness or perhaps an ear witness. We are to give testimony or witness of the things of Christ Jesus. But what's fascinating about this word, is how it developed over a short time in history. The word may sound familiar to you, martyreo, because it is where we get our English word martyr from. A martyr is someone who is killed for their faith or their testimony, their witness. And it was only in the second century when the word martyr in Greek, which means to give a testimony, became a technical term for a person who had died for Christ. In just 90 years or so, the word went from someone who is a witness to someone who is killed because of their witness of Christ Jesus. The early disciples and followers of Christ Jesus felt so strongly about their testimony and witness of Jesus that they died for it. And this happened so much that the actual word evolved to mean that we know the word martyr to mean today. In fact, later a, a, a different word was used to define someone who proclaimed Christ's lordship at trial but did not suffer the death penalty. A different word developed, and that word is the word confessor, which is the title given to our patron saint of our church, Saint Edward the Confessor from the 11th century. So our lesson today is that we are called by our Lord Jesus Christ to be witnesses of who he was and who he is. Christ suffered and died. Christ rose from the grave. And through his work, we can repent and be forgiven. And this is what we proclaim to all people, all groups of people. And this is our testimony that we take even to the grave. 
This is our, our Easter message. On this third Sunday in Easter, as Christ appeared to his disciples, he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And so Christ says to us today, all of us in this room, and that can hear me online too, you are witnesses of these things. You are witnesses of these things. So may we go into this world, into our towns, into our neighborhoods, and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. For that is our calling, to be witnesses of these things. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The service continues with the prayers of the people. Found on page 328, your Book of Common Prayer, or you can follow along on the screens above. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers which we offer unto divine majesty, beseech thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, our diocesan bishop, and Bishop Justin, Michael, Gregory, Dorsey, and Jay, and Mark, our priests, and deacons Mickey, and Kim, and Bob, and for Dan or aspirant for the diaconate, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth the true and lively word, and rightly and duly minister thy holy sacraments. And we lift up in prayer this day, this Sunday, the parishes of St. George's Church in the Villages and St. Gabriel's Church in Titusville, and our supported missionaries in Thailand and Cameroon, and our ministries, especially Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And that all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially this congregation here present, and for our parish members, Raymond Cooper and Linda Farrell, that meet part and do reverence they may receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also to rule the hearts of those that bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph our president, 
and Ron, our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right action for the welfare and peace of the world. I'd like to say the following prayer for peace. Let us pray. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn, but the sword of righteousness, no strength known, but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all people may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace, as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, let us remember those who give themselves to the service of others, doctors, nurses, teachers, and all who minister for those in need and provide the necessities of life, especially remembering those who are in the military and first responders associated with our parish family, remembering TJ, Kyle, Mary, Ian, Elizabeth, Laura, Matt, Robert, Trevor, William, Colin, Steve, Nicholas, Christian, Victor, Kent, Clay, Bradley, Greg, Emma, and Andrew. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people, behold that gracious hand in all their works, that rejoice in the whole creation, they may honor their, their, their substance, and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech you thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor those names on our parish prayer list, remembering Kurt, Bruce, Erlis and Harris, Rachel, Janet, Claire, Peter, Raymond, Ann, Joe, Franklin, MJ, Richard, Fred, and any names I'd like to remember at this time. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any adversity. And we give thanks for the blessings of this life, especially those celebrating their birthday this week, remembering Karen Damon. Janet Martin, Sandra Bradham, Cannon Lausch, Michael Shipes, Doug Betla, Hunter Wobey, and Logan Wobley. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life by faith and fear, especially remembering Owen Connor, Florence McMichael, Ruth Morris, Edith Locke, Paul Potsko, Bella Porter, Ruth Weatherall, Mary McLynn, Mary Masters, Marion Osborne, Mary Simpson, Harry Morley, and Jean Carr, George McCord. Beseeching the grant and continual growth in our love and service, and a grant us grace to follow the good example of the Virgin Mary, St. Edward, and all thy saints that with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, good morning again. It is good to see all of you on this third third Sunday in Easter tide. Um, I have some announcements for you, but first, I'd like to give a welcome to any um, visitors and newcomers we have here today. Thank you so much for worshiping with us in the narthex where you came in. There's a booklet back there, and if you could put your name and your address on there, that way we have a record of your visit, and we can send you some information about our church family, but thank you for being here today, and thank you for being here online as well. Um, I got an update on our playground campaign.
Our worship continues with Holy Eucharist Prayer 1, found on page 333 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 333. The Lord be with you. With thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is me right so to do. It is very meet, right in our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again hath won for us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may kneel or stand. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
you would like to receive prayers of healing for yourself or for someone you know, please come forward at this time. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.